blessed morning to everyone and welcome to our 1030 online service. As we prepare our hearts to hear from the Word of God today, we would like to give you our announcements for this week's activities. The next prayer service on Wednesday will be for the church planned e-library. This is in line with the plans of the church to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people. This is also a good time for us to pray for our church and personal concerns. We invite all of you to join us on April 14 at 8 p.m. via Zoom for a time of prayer and fellowship. The Young Professionals or YPRO will be having their next fellowship on April 17, 8 p.m. via Zoom. This is open to all working professionals of the church and this is a great opportunity to interact and fellowship with one another. You may contact Attorney Paul Castillo and Marvi Uy for more details. The Teens Fellowship will be on April 18 at 2 to 4 p.m. via Zoom. This is open to all children ages 10 to 14 and parents, you are also invited to watch with your children. Please feel free to contact Sister Cecil Arisgado or Jeremy Santiago for questions and more details. The Women of Bread or Womb will have their fellowship for April on the 24th at 3 p.m. The title of our activity is Fit for the Master's Use. And our speaker is Pastor Abel Salamat. We'll also be having a special activity with Sister Mae Venturina, so please come dressed in your best exercise attire. This is open for all ladies, 18 years of age and above. Please contact Sister Winnie Tumlao and the core team of the WOMB for more details. We would like to remind you of these weekly activities that are open to all. These are designed for us to understand and apply what we believe as a church into our daily lives. Not only that, our weekly ministry fellowship gives us the opportunity to catch up with each other. Please feel free to contact our church pastors and staff for the details. You can all see these activity details plus more on our Facebook page and the revamped Bread from Heaven Christian Fellowship website. Please visit www.breadfromheaven.org to know more about our church. Here, you may see and view the previous sermons and services, read the articles of faith that define what we believe in as a church, learn how to give your tithes online, and of course, many more. So once again, please visit www.breadfromheaven.org. We would also like to remind you that our church has a channel on YouTube. Please subscribe so you can watch our previous services and be notified when our Sunday service premiere live. God bless you and your family this week, and we pray you stay safe. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the service with an attitude of worship, thankful to our God for His presence, provision, and protection. morning brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, today is the first Sunday after the Resurrection Sunday we um, celebrated last week. And um, of course we know that uh, God has uh, promised His people. He has assured the Israelites, I will give you a new heart. This morning of course I will be reading from uh, the book of uh, Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verses 22 to 30. And the word of the Lord says, Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you went. I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations which you have profaned in their 
who paint in their midst. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when I prove myself holy among you in their mere sight. For I will take you from the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove the heart of stone from you, flesh, and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. You will be careful to observe my ordinances. You will live in the land that I give to your forefathers, so you will be my people and I will be your God. Moreover, I will save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the grain and multiply it, and I will not bring a famine on you. I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the produce of the field so that you will not receive again the disgrace of famine among the nations. Yes, the Lord God has a promises people, the Israelites, I will give you a new heart. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And he will also promise, I will cleanse you from all your impurities and put my spirit in you. Brothers and sisters, that promise was ultimately fulfilled through the uh, sufferings and uh, death of Jesus uh, Christ and His resurrection. If we trust in Him, we receive a new spiritual uh, heart. Yes, that's what the Lord God has done for us. And um, He has given us a new heart, a spiritual heart to love Him and serve Him alone. Praise the Lord, uh, the name of the Lord our God. Let us pray. Our God and our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your uh, love and goodness to all of us, our God. Yes, Lord, uh, you have shown your great and wonderful love to all of us. And we experience your love and your goodness throughout the years of our lives, our God. Even in this time of uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we know, Lord, that uh, in your protection and guidance upon us, we uh, will stand up from this um, COVID-19 pandemic. And um, yes, Lord, for... You are there who will uh, um, protect us and keep us safe from this pandemic, our God. And uh, we know, Lord, that uh, deliverance will uh, come from this, in, this, in our country also. We praise you, Lord, and uh, worship you. And uh, Lord God, even um, as we be uh, singing uh, worshipful songs to you, we uh, offer it to you, our God, and thank you even for the music team that will uh, they will be leading us to uh, singing this uh, beautiful uh, songs to you. We offer it to you, our holy, mighty God. We only be honoring and uh, glorified. Lord our God, we will now lift up to you our dear pastor who will be um, delivering to us uh, your message uh, this morning. May you speak through him, our God, that he will um, uh, speak from um, uh, uh, your word and with the utterances of his mouth will uh, come from you alone, our holy and mighty God. Yes, Lord, um, 
the similar as all the the message that they will be delivering us to, to us this morning our God may uh, minister to us our holy mighty God yes Lord uh, bless him bless his um, tongue our God his mouth our God that uh, he will deliver to us um, your message uh, this morning even uh, through this virtual means our God and uh, Lord we live up to you our lives are God. We in control of our, our situations in our lives are God. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory and honor. And in Christ's mighty name, we pray all these things. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us sing for joy to our God who reigns. Let all the earth rejoice and be glad. For he who has promised is always faithful. And through our Lord Jesus Christ, our hope is secured. I 
Don't stop and count successes Like diamonds in my hands But those trophies could not equal To the grace by which I stand Good morning, everyone. Praise God for another Sunday of worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We continue to conduct our worship services in online in Bread from Heaven. Christian Fellowship as a way of keeping our congregation safe, especially with the recent increases in COVID-19 cases in our community. Let us all keep safe and socially distanced as we help our authorities and community in reducing the cases of COVID-19 infections in our country. And now, as we begin our worship service, let us all come to the Lord in prayer. Let's all bow down our heads and let's pray. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We gather together in your name to sing praises and to study your word. We pray that you would give us the wisdom that comes only from the Spirit, that we are able to discern your will and your message for us this morning. Let the Spirit speak through your preacher this morning and let your voice be heard by your people. And also let your people be moved by the, moved by the written word from the passage that we will be reading this morning. Lord, in all this, may your name be praised and only you will be the focus of our hearts and our minds. 
Lord, we lift up all this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen. We started 2021 in Bread from Heaven, focusing on getting a better understanding of the Kingdom of God. This April, we continue to put our attention on the book of Hebrews with the hope of getting a better understanding of the person of Jesus Christ, who is Lord and Savior of His people, and consistent with our theme for the month of April, He is also our Great High Priest. Now, if you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to the pages of your Bible to Hebrews chapter 6, and we will be reading the whole chapter. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, and verse 1 starts, Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, and of instruction about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits, for it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared the Holy, in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding Him up to contempt. For land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful for those whose sake it is cultivated receives a blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to be incursed, and its end is to be burned. In verse 9, Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. For God is not, an unjust, is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for His name in serving the saints as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. In verse 13, For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes, an oath is a final confirmation, or is, a, is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of His purpose, He guaranteed it with an oath, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to refuge might have strong and encourage might have strong encouragement to hold fast the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. May the name, may the name of the Lord be praised with the reading of His word, and we all sing. Amen. Now, whenever a passage in the Bible begins with the word therefore, I fondly remember what Pastor Doy taught us when he was still with us, that whenever we see this word in a passage, we must always ask ourselves the question, why is it therefore? The answer can, all, can often be found in the preceding verse of the passage that we read. Now, turning to Hebrews chapter 5, in verse 11 it is written, about this we have much to say. It is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature 
for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. We see in this preceding passage that the writer of the epistle made an assessment of the spiritual condition of the Hebrew believers, those whom are recipient of this particular letter, particular to their knowledge and understanding of the oracles of God. Why and for what reason? Well, the writers see the need for them to be taught again and again of the basic principles and truths of the oracles of God. They have become dull in hearing. And then he mentioned that they needed milk and not solid food. It is clear that the writer was comparing the Hebrew believers to infants, to newborn babies. And those who, are, who have raised children and those who have young children would have insights as to what the writer was referring to when he wrote that they can only be fed milk. It is said that babies have digestive systems that are still developing up to six months of age. Now, before their digestive system is fully mature, babies can only take in milk because this is the only nourishment that their digestive system can handle. At six months and beyond, when the baby's digestive system becomes more mature, they can be fed with more complex food. But still, the food, the food needs to be in fluid form, i.e. blended. And examples of this would be the famous gerber, of course, for those who can afford, and in, for Filipinos, I believe that the more familiar one would be am. And what is an am? It is a milky substance or liquid that you get from cooking rice. And it's also called rice water. Why does this need to be in fluid form? Well, because they don't have teeth. The babies don't have teeth yet that is needed for chewing solid food. And chewed food allows for better reaction of food with digestive enzymes that are found in our digestive systems and this allows for good absorptions, absorption of nutrients in the digestive tract. And the writer wrote that they still need milk, not even our Filipino am. Then we go to verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 6 and find the following passage. He called them by saying to, they need to leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of instructions about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. There are a number of insights that we can get coming from this passage, and the first one would be that the writer or the author of the Hebrews uh, assess that the Hebrew believers to whom this letter was addressed to knew that they have already heard a good foundation about the doctrine of Christ. Second, they, that they were encouraged to move to more mature teachings about Christ. So the writer is encouraging them to move to more mature teachings. However, it looks like that the Hebrew believers were stuck with the elementary teachings about Christ and possible even that they were regressing and reverting back to the patterns and the shadows that were revealed to them in the Old Testament. But then, the writer speaks of confidence of better things to come, things that belong to salvation, and he spoke of a sure and a steadfast anchor of our soul, that is, in Jesus Christ. Which brings me to the title of the preaching for this morning, and the title for our preaching is Jesus Christ, Our Hope for God's Rest. Now, what is God's rest? We don't need to go too far from the passage that we, that we read earlier to find a good response to this question. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1, it is written, Therefore, while the promise of entering His rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. And also in verses 8 to 10 of, of Hebrews chapter 4, For if Joshua have given them rest, God would have not spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his work as God did from his now, the Greek word that was translated as rest in these passages 
is actually the word kataposin. Parang katapusan. Okay? It is a noun and it's feminine and the meaning is rest. However, this particular rest is in fact more closely related to a place which for the Hebrew believers and of course for the Israelites uh, in the Old Testament means to them a settlement. Okay? A rest that is attained by the settlement in Canaan. Okay? Or a dwelling or habitation. So it is more closely related to a place, this particular rest that was used in Hebrews uh, chapter 4. Okay? The same goes with, of course, verses 8 to 10. It refers to the same rest that was translated coming from the Greek word. Now, this Greek word is actually katapawo, which is built up by two other Greek words, kata, a preposition meaning down, and uh, powo, which is a primary verb, which means pause. So in actuality, katapawo is actually the act of settling down, which is the place by which the promise was given, or sorry, the promised uh, land that was given by God to the people of Israel. Okay. And then you have the same word rest or translated as rest in Matthew 11, uh, verse 28. If uh, I may quote, Jesus declared, Come to me, all, uh, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, for this particular passage, the Greek word that was used was anapawo. Okay? While in, in Hebrews chapter 4, it was katapawo. Here it is anapowo. It is a verb and it's, it means intermission from labor, a refresh. Okay? Now, the distinction between the rest referred to in Hebrews chapter 4 as against the rest that was referred to in Matthew 11 verse 28 is important because each rest convey a different meaning and hope for the people of God. While in Matthew 20, 11 verse 28 it refers to a rest that is relating to effort, okay? Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. The rest in Hebrews chapter 4 alludes more to a location, a place that is the promise of God for his people. Okay. And that is why in the Old Testament for the Israelites who were rescued from Egypt, the rest that was promised was associated with the land of promise, Canaan. A land that was teeming with milk and honey, and they were all looking forward to reaching that place. Now, going back to Hebrews chapter 4, 11 to 12, an encouragement was given. Let us therefore strive to enter the rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and of the spirit, of joints and of, and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts of in, or, and intentions of the heart. But then also, it is written in Hebrews 4, uh, verse 3, For we who have believed entered the rest, as he has said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. It seems a warning, but again, another warning is given in verse 6. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news, failed to enter because of disobedience. Again, he appoints a certain day, today saying through David, so long afterward, in the words already quoted, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And finally, a stern reminder for them and a point of realization, even for us these days, and no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So nobody is hidden, not our acts, not all our activities that are in the dark, not all the sins, everything, all of these are actually visible to him. Now the question that needs to, to be answered and will also serve as a transition question for us this morning is the following. Why is there a hope of God's rest? in Jesus. Well, we will try to discern the meaning uh, and, and, and the, the, the truths that we can 
get coming from chapter 6 of Hebrews as to a response to the question, why is there a hope of God's rest in Jesus Christ? The first response and the first truth that I'd like to share with you is Jesus Christ died on the cross once and for all. We find this in Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 to 8. Okay, And going straight to my points, the epistle uh, was addressed to the Hebrew believers who were knowledgeable and at a minimum familiar with the patterns that were passed on through generations via the Jewish oral tradition. Okay? These are also found written in the Old Testament. So everything that was written when it comes to the laying on of hands, the works that need to be done, the sacrifices, the watching, all of these are actually part of the Jewish oral tradition and also written in the Old Testament. And the writer also wrote that there is no need to lay down these foundations anymore. Okay? Why? Because the high priest during that time, under the Levitical priesthood, is appointed by God who mediated in behalf of the people of Israel. They were to offer sacrifices in a manner that was so detailed and precise that any deviation is prohibited and suffered consequences. There was a case in, uh, of Aaron's son. If you have read about this in Leviticus chapter 10, there was this Nadad and Abihu who offered an authorized fire which the Lord had not commanded them. The result was that a fire came out from before the Lord and both died before the Lord. So both Nadad and Abihu died before the Lord. And their bodies were brought out of the camp of Israel with clear and detailed instructions on, from Moses to the people who will be bringing them out on how to do this. Imagine they've been killed, they, they died before the Lord, and at the same time, they were actually taken out of the Jewish or the camp of the Israelites. And this actually signifies that they were really taken out of the presence of the Lord because outside the camp of Israel during the Old Testament times means that you are in fact outside the presence of the Lord. This is where the Gentiles and those who are uh, sick were actually brought. And also, in Leviticus chapter 16, after the death of the sons of Aaron, Moses was given meticulous instructions by the Lord on how Aaron and the priesthood, that is, in the order of Aaron, should perform tasks for the sin and burnt offering for the Lord, an offering for himself and for the people of Israel to cleanse himself, the, 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 the Aaron, and also the people. And the thing is, this must be done every tenth day of the seventh month of every year. And this must be done forever. So you ask yourself, meron ba talagang forever? Okay. Then came Jesus and through him, the requirements of sin and burnt offerings forever has been satisfied. We can say that there is forever pala. Meron pala talagang forever. The writer wrote of Jesus, the Son of God, as being appointed a great high priest, not in the order of Aaron, but rather in the order of Melchizedek, where you can find this in Hebrews chapter 5. Uh, the difference is that the priesthood in the order of Melchizedek is the main, uh, is that what, what was given to Jesus. It is covered primarily in Hebrews chapter 7, but I, and I will not be de detailing much about this priesthood, other than it is in this pattern, it is in this priesthood that Jesus, the perfect high priest that we have, our great high priest, was appointed by God to satisfy his wrath. Okay. Suffice to say that in Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, who has no sin, both committed and inherited, died on a cross as a perfect and complete propitiation for the wrath of God, and then he rose on the third day and lives and sat down at the right side of God, medi mediating for his people in Eternity. So why is there a hope of God's rest in Jesus? Well, there is hope of God's rest in Jesus because he died on the cross to offer once and for all a sacrifice to atone for the sin of his people. His life and death is the complete propitiation for the wrath 
of God. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 17, it is written, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Yes, Jesus died on the cross once and for all. And the requirement of the covenant of to walk before me and be blameless, uh, the covenant of God with Abraham, has been satisfied by the life and work of Jesus Christ. And for those who believe in him, those who are born again of the Spirit, can rest on the hope that is in Jesus. Now, that was the first truth that I shared with you. I go to the second truth in answer to the question, why is there hope of God's rest in Jesus? Well, the second truth is, is Jesus Christ was and is the fulfillment of the covenant promise of God. Whereas the first truth I shared with you is that Jesus Christ died once and for all. The second one is that he is the fulfillment of the covenant promise of God. We find this in verses 13 to 20 of the passage that we read. Now going to my main points, in Bread from Heaven, our preachers have preached to you about the covenant promise of God to his people that was revealed to Abraham. It is a promise that was sealed by an oath from God himself, and these two unchangeable things, the promise and the oath, is the hope that we have. In a nutshell, if we may just review what this promise is all about, in a paraphrasing, in my own words, God promised the following, and he said, I am God Almighty, I shall be your God, you shall be my people, walk before me, and be blameless. But the fact of the matter is that there is no man nor woman who can be blameless, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is why God sent his Son, Jesus, God incarnate, for he alone is blameless. He alone has no sin and committed no sin. In him, we have hope that enters the inner place, the Holy of Holies, as it was in the tabernacle, where the high priest alone may enter. In him, in Jesus, the promise of God has been fulfilled. There is no one else, not the high priest of old king. No one, even in the New Testament, was able to fulfill this promise. Now, as to the question again, why is there a hope of God's rest in Jesus? First, we said that Jesus Christ died on the cross once and for all. For in Jesus, God will remember the sin of his people no more. God will not... The negative here is a bit different, but it's, it is saying that God will not remember the sin of his people. Okay? But poetically, it was actually written that God will remember the sin of, of his people no more. Now, the second one, we said that Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of the covenant promise of God. For in Jesus, the requirement of walking before God and being blameless has been satisfied. As mentioned earlier, he alone is blameless. He alone is righteous. He alone had a life that is in complete obedience to God. Now again, we ask the question, why is there a hope of God's rest in Jesus? I shared to you the first two points and the third truth that I'd like to share with you is that Jesus Christ is the everlasting mediator of man with our sovereign God. Again, the third point in response to the question, why is there a hope? of God's rest in Jesus is because Jesus Christ is the everlasting mediator of man with our sovereign God. We find this in verses 19 to 20 of the passage that we've heard. Now, the inner place behind the curtain of the tabernacle is where the high priest and only the high priest is allowed to enter. It is the holy of holies. It is a place to be face to face with God. Now, Jesus is the forerunner on our behalf, having torn the veil and having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. 
an order that is before the law. It is even said that it is an order that is above and beyond the written law. For it is written in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16, and also it was adopted coming from Jeremiah 31, 33. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Okay. So Jesus is our everlasting mediator with our sovereign God. Why? Because there is no one else who is qualified. Whereas in the Old Testament, you need a high priest who unfortunately dies. Okay. They cannot fulfill their role in eternity. And the requirement is an offering that is forever. In Jesus Christ, this forever was actually satisfied. Now, in summary, why is there hope of God's rest in Jesus? Well, we've learned the following truths. Jesus Christ died on the cross once and for all. Jesus Christ was and is the fulfillment of the covenant promise of God. And Jesus Christ is the everlasting mediator of man with God. Now in Matthew 11, if we may just revisit it, it is written starting in verse 25 that at that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no, one's, no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest. For your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. While Jesus declared that the revelation is given to children in Matthew 11, we are reminded in Hebrews chapter 6 that we need to grow to maturity about the things of salvation from God, and this was God's gracious will. And that the knowledge of the Father and of the Son is given to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. I pray that all of us, after hearing the Word of God, gets into a deeper knowledge of the Father and the Son. Now, for us, this gives a deeper meaning to the declaration of Jesus to His disciples when He said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For the work that is required in the Old Testament for fulfilling the law, a work that the high priest needs to perform forever, in eternity, has been satisfied forever by only one. Only one. And He is our great High Priest, and He is Jesus Christ. The question in my mind right now, and really it's more of an application, is, is any one of you heavy laden? Other things you are experiencing right now, proving to be so burdensome and heavy in the soul. These days are days of struggle, and we have a pandemic which have been with us for more than a year, and it seems that there is no end in sight. We've seen friends, families come and get sick. Some of them actually passed on. We've seen people who have suffered because of this pandemic, either of course of the illness or because financially they're actually suffering because they're struggling to really get their, to, 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 to make ends meet. And although we are given respite with the developments of COVID, of vaccines for COVID-19, and there are of course good reasons to thank the people who were instrumental in developing these vaccines, especially the authorities who made the quick processing of approvals for these vaccines and also for our frontliners. But ultimately, let us not lose sight of the hope that we have in the one 
who has authority over everything. The one who is the sure and steadfast anchor of our soul. Our great high priest from the order of Melchizedek forever. Let us come to him, all of us who are heavy laden, and he will give us rest. Let's all bow down our heads and let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning again for the reminder that indeed we can only find rest. A rest that is your promise. A rest that is in fact a place. But not only a place, Lord, a place that is with you. It is also a rest from the effort of fulfilling your covenant requirement of walking blamelessly before you. Lord, we know that we have, we, are, we have sinned. We know that we fall short of your glory. We know that we cannot redeem ourselves and that we cannot pay for the sins that we have. And only Jesus Christ is the one who can fulfill this requirement, for he alone is righteous. We thank you, Lord, because you have sent your Son, not only as our Lord and Savior, not only as a Lamb of God, but also our great High Priest. For now, coming from the word that we have shared and we have read and studied this morning, we know that we have a great high priest in Jesus who mediates for us forever. We have a great high priest who need not sacrifice anymore for he did this at the cross. For the sacrifice and the suffering that he went through on the cross has satisfied the propitiation of your wrath, Lord. We thank you because only Him can satisfy your wrath. Only His sacrifice and only the life and the work that He has can be considered blameless and righteous. And Lord, we thank you because of the promise that you have given your people. We thank you because we know that for those whom you have chosen, these words would be clear. And that these words and the teachings that we have studied this morning would add to our knowledge of who you are and what you are in our lives. Lord, indeed, for this month of April, we continue to see you as our great high priest. We see you conforming to the patterns that were in the Old Testament, where in the Hebrew and the Jewish traditions were actually solidly founded. We know that all these you have allowed us to, to see so that we may better understand, Lord, the nature of your person. We thank you because we know that all this you have fulfilled because you alone are worthy. And for us these days, Lord, we can only look forward to you. We can only look up to you, Lord, for a hope of God's rest. Lord, we, we look forward to the day that we will be with you that the completion of that the completion of our reconciliation with you and our your presence in our midst would be done especially in the second coming of Christ we know that your kingdom is already here but we also know that your kingdom shall be finally fulfilled when Jesus Christ comes back and judge the people of this world. We hope and we can only hope, Lord, that as you reveal your word to us, 
as we start to understand more about you, that indeed we are part of your people. And for this, Lord, we are eternally grateful. We thank you, Lord, for the sovereign will and the sovereign choice that you have made. And we thank you, Lord, for sending your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our High Priest, who will always be seen by you as righteous. And we thank you, Lord, because his righteousness has been transferred, or the, 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 the better word would be here, his righteousness, righteousness has been imputed to us, Lord, that only his righteousness you can see when you look at us. Jesus Christ has clothed us with his own righteousness, and that is why you will no longer remember the sins that we have committed. Lord, we thank you. Continue to sustain us, Lord, as we struggle in this world. Continue to provide for us, to protect us. In the midst of the, the, the pandemic that we are experiencing right now, in the, the, the struggle, Lord, financially that we have, we just lift them up to you. And we offer to you the people, uh, your people, Lord, that you have in bread from heaven, that they may be discerning, Lord, of the needs of our congregation, and that you will allow especially the leadership that we have to be able to respond to the needs of your people in bread. Lord, guide us and sustain us, Lord, during these days. Lord, we can only thank you and we are eternally grateful because you are the Lord forever and our great high priest forever. We thank you. We give praise to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A blessed warm summer Sunday to you all, brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope you were blessed with the message from the Word today. Before we pray, Please be reminded that you can give your tithes and offering by depositing them in the bank account shown on your screen or through cash transfer by a GCash or PayMaya. Please indicate the name Bread from Heaven. And if you needed more information on how you can give, please call the number on your screen. We will be glad to answer all your queries. Now, let me share to you a verse about giving. From the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the Apostle Paul wrote, and it states, And God, who is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency, in all things, at all times, you may abound in every good works. Let us pray. Our Holy Father in heaven, we thank you once again for gathering us and being given the opportunity to worship you, to praise you, and present our petition to you. Our dear Father, our country is experiencing a gr another great distress. A second wave of virus has now become more infectious. More people are getting sick and many are dying. Help us, Lord, to overcome this situation. Protect us from this pandemic. Give us the courage and the strength to overcome the fear that is encroaching in our mind. Give us your comforting presence. And most of all, Lord, help us to keep our trust in you. Put in our hearts and in our mind that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that you are the God who is merciful, the true ever-present help in times of need. 
and as us an expression of our gratitude and faithfulness to your word, we humbly give our tithes and offering. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and Amen. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. Our Lord Jesus Christ, knowing you are our high priest, right now, where we are, we come to your throne of grace. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that nothing we have gone through in this life and we will go through that you, our high priest, our anchor, will not experience. Kaya naman po, ano man ang aming pagdaanan sa mga dati na mga araw, ang dalangin po namin, papagtibayin mo ang aming mga pananampalataya. And knowing you are our God who is faithful and true, allow my brothers and sisters to receive your word and in your truthfulness, Father God, accomplish this in the hearing of my brothers and sisters. People of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face upon you, grant you peace, comfort, protection, even healing in them the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Oh